What's up, everybody? Rich Redman here on this episode of Pick Rich's Brain. My guest is Coach Michael Burt, and we're talking about falling in love with rejection, follow-up, introverts, and even Bill Clinton. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor. Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits. Over 30 years of been there, done that wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. Mr. Michael Burt, Coach Burt. I love it. Uh, and the website is coachburt.com. And you've got, a, you've got 12 books out. Mm -hmm. This, this book out right now is called Everybody Needs a Coach in Life because the term life coach gets thrown around. Yes. Really what you are is a success coach, yes. success coach. Some of your clients, Caldwell Banker, Churchill Mortgage, Vanderbilt University, the Tennessee State Government, Better Homes and Gardens, this is incredible. And then you have a program called the Monster Producer, mm -hmm. Total Growth Academy. I mean, when I went to your website, I was like, wow, how does this person sleep? People say that about me, like, oh my God, you do a lot of things. <laughs> but something just tells me that you are just a very, very busy person, have a lot of offerings. So tell us a little bit about yourself and where you came from, what you're doing, what you plan to do. Sure, and thank you for having me. Of course. I'm a big fan of your work and the, the people you've been able to work with. Success, you know, leaves a little residue, right, on you. So all the people you've been around has been amazing. Thank you. And uh, and so I'm glad to be here. My, my journey really started very early in life because I found my voice at 15 years old. I started coaching literally junior pro basketball, nine to 12 year olds when I was 15. So nice. I knew I was supposed to be coaching. You that, were talking about- That was many, your purpose. How many years you've been right. a drummer, right? 40 years. So, so, so you, <laughs> you figured this out pretty early in life. Yeah. And, uh, and so I did that, got to the largest high school or second largest high school in Tennessee at 19. While I was in college, became the head coach at 22. So I was the youngest that's head young. coach in the state of Tennessee. Because you had that jump start. I had the jump start yeah. and that's critical. That's, that, that's very critical for, for parents to, <laughs> yeah. to help their children find their voice early in life. Mm -hmm. And so at 22, man, I'm in the deep end coaching this large high school, second largest high school in Tennessee. And what I was really doing that made me unique was I was coming over to the business world and I was really studying how the best businesses in the world work. And I was bringing those concepts back over to the athletic world. This was very uncommon in 99, 2000. So I was teaching every player the seven habits of highly affected people, the principles of good to great, the five dysfunctions of teams. So imagine your daughter playing for me and learning those things. And you're kind of like spoon feeding yes. them in there. Yes. I, yeah. So uh, 14, 18, so my players had a competitive intelligence about them. They were smarter, they were more connected, they had higher trust levels, they bought yeah. into me. So we began to win at very, very high levels. And people said, what are you doing? You know, are you brainwashing those kids? It's, it's, it's more than the game. Yeah, they were like, man, what are you doing? So I didn't have a chance to, to explain it. So I said, what if I just write a book and I could share that with the world? So I wrote a, wrote a book called Changing Lives Through Coaching at 25 because I do believe a good coach can change your life. Right. And that book led me out to speaking at big places like Dell and State Farm and National Healthcare. And after I would speak, they would say, man, we really enjoyed it. We love your energy. Our people loved you. Will you come back? and coach our people. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to win a championship. I love coaching kids. I have no intention whatsoever wow. of coaching adults. So at 25, they were already offering you the, the job to, they, to coach yeah. business teams. They said, will you come back? Because our people liked it. Yeah. And so we come, and at that time I had no intention of doing that. I wanted to win a championship that had never been done at the school I was at. So right. 30 years with no championship. At 31, I'd won the championship by this point. I had four books out in the market and I was getting demand to speak and coach companies all over the country. Yes. So I did retire at 31 from athletics wow. to build a coaching company. Nice. And that's very different than life coaching. You know, as you and I have been talking, what I really am is a business coach. Right. I really help people drastically accelerate their companies through system, process, certain models. And, and people think it's life coaching. And some people, I guess I am their life coach. Yeah. But I'm really their business coach. Really? Yeah. Yes. I love that. So, so, so today, nine years into this, we're now coaching anywhere from small entrepreneurial companies to multi-billion dollar companies. And pretty much every week, I'm, I'm coaching a new team towards some dominant focus. Wow. That's incredible. And you found that purpose because I know that you, that you mentioned on your website, purpose, like yeah. having a purpose in life. And, and the sooner you can find that, the better. Yes. Because in my event, my crash events are commitment, relationships, attitude, skill, hunger. Mm -hmm. I talk about if, if, if 
students have an interest in something, if yes. parents can support that 150%, because kids are on their devices now, yeah. they're distracted, they're having communication problems, it's like, let's get this kid off the Netflix, and if they show interest in the arts or anything, have parents support that. My parents drove me around with drum sets and timpani loaded in yeah. the back and chimes, and yeah. super, super supportive. But, but So that gave you a big uh, advantage getting out there and building your business. Well, I think, you, you said the right word, is as parents, and I have a five-year-old daughter, it's important for me, I believe who's coaching her is more important than who the President of the United States is because they have so much impact and influence. Every day. I begin to hear from an early age, son, you're gonna be a great coach. You know, and I heard that over and over and over. So it's really affirmed and validated me. So it's key for parents out there who watch this or anybody that, that the earlier you start, so really I've been coaching for 25 years, and you mentioned tipping point earlier. Yeah. If you do believe in ten thousand hours of practice, and, totally. I, and I personally do subscribe to that. That that was that. Yeah. You, you know, I won a championship in my tenth year. I'm going into my tenth year of running my company, and we're seeing tremendous momentum of hundred percent growth year over year. So, the earlier you can start and find this, the right. faster you're going to accelerate. And I think the parents' job is to put their children in a, in an environment they can thrive in. Yeah. That's why I talk to all my students. I say, whether it be a master class or a clinic or one-on-one, -on -one, I say, look at 10,000 hours, 10, hours, if you do the math, mm -hmm. um, it's something like eight hours a day, seven days a week for That's around right. six years. That's right. And so I say, you know, I never kept a journal on that, but I, I know for a fact that I easily did that 10,000 hours yes. just in a place like this, in a, in a dark room, just working on my craft. And then when I started playing with other musicians, right. let's face it, you know, the music and sports, it's, it's, a, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. And you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you're in a, if, in a band and the bass player is horrendous and he's right. just bringing the overall quality of the band down, I've also seen like very mediocre bands sound incredible mm -hmm. with drummers. The drummer can really bring the, the elevate Absolutely. The, the performance of the band. Well, I'm know? sure you see this. Uh, the energy, you know, I think when you're hanging around people that are much better than you, it forces you to get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a big problem a lot of people don't do is I want to be around people who are way better than me in everything, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of people hang around other people that operate at a very low ordinance, right? They're never getting better. Anytime I was struggling in my life, I look for other strugglers. Like gravitates toward like. Yeah. Association breeds a similar. Birds of a feather flock. And, and, and there's a reason those are true, right? Yeah. And so I think in a band, when you, when you really see a great band play, what I see is a tremendous synergy of talents that the business world really could learn a lot from. And communication. That's right. Communication, the synergy of talents, very high levels of, co of creative excitement. You know, so when you see it, it's a magical thing yeah. that you don't get to see in the corporate world a lot of it operating at that level. And that's one thing I miss from coaching. When my team was operating at a very high level, five people together, I mean, it was just amazing to watch. And it's not as intense in the business world, so that's one thing I do miss sometimes from coaching. Yeah, and because in corporate America, I mean, there is so much, there are so many mouths to feed, and then we're going to come up with this concept, and it has to reach all that's these right. people. That's right. And that really slows down the whole process. Yes. That's why you see pockets of greatness, and, and, and you know, they call it sea of mediocrity. You can have an island of excellence in a sea of mediocrity, but that's really the reason is it's hard to build a complete thing that's great. So there's these little pockets that are really good, and then there's pockets that are very mediocre. And I, and I don't know if you will agree with me or not, but you know I'm a coffee guy, mm -hmm. so people, some true aficionados are like, no, I always support the mom and pop. If I can find a mom and pop coffee, I will go. Yeah. But Starbucks yeah. is so consistent, yes. and the business model, they come in, they know my name, Right. Mitch, right? I'm Mitch, <laughs> and I will answer to Mitch because the product is so superior anywhere in the world. Right. It's the same product. I don't even know how they do this, but and and there's a feeling when I walk in. I feel like I'm a member of a, a special club, and they. I just love the whole thing. If I can run my business, my drumming business, my music business, my speaking right. business like that, what are your thoughts on the consistency of a company like Starbucks? Well, I think I think consistency is critical. I I think people overpay for things every day that they really want, yeah. right? And I right. say you can dine on 99 cent hamburgers or filet mignon steak, but you always get what you pay for. Yeah. You know, I'm never gonna be the cheapest person in town, but I think the value we create far exceeds uh, what, we're, what, we're, what we're charging. Perceived value. Yeah. It, I was reading about exactly that. Right. That's right, yeah. yeah. The, the, the whole idea that, it, what's so funny sometimes is in, in the world of art, mm -hmm. you know, you will see, you know, you will see a Warhol or you will see some of these artists that mm -hmm. maybe they have 50 pieces around the world. And you go, my God, that's just a bunch of red, yellow, and green dots strategically placed. And they just, they're all copies of each other. Yes. They're all original. And some go for a million dollars. Yes. Well, you mentioned it, perceived value. And, and, and it is perception. Yeah. 
You know, I, when I wrote the book Person of Interest, Person of Interest is because I believe status sales. In any environment, when you're negotiating, status always wins. Uh, with a person of higher status typically gets what they want more, they typically win more in the world. I believe money follows attention, I believe it follows energy, I believe it follows circulation. So we try to teach the people we're coaching how to raise their status. Mm -hmm. It's a very commoditized world. What I mean by that is there's millions of people competing for the same space, right? And so we're looking for some differential advantage on how we can create a separation between one person and another person. The average cat doesn't understand that. Right. They just go out there and think, I outwork everybody, and maybe that is your differential advantage. But when all things are balanced, there's got to be some intangible that separates you. Right. This is my coach. An it factor? This is the, yeah, this is the coach coming out in me because I would look at my schedule as a coach and I would say there's four games out of 30 that could go either way. Right. Talent is balanced. Maybe they're even better than us, right? Bigger, faster, stronger. How do we win those games? See, more heart, more yeah. strategy. That's right. Right? right? Maybe? The yeah. funny thing is, is that, you know, you're talking about the personal branding mm -hmm. of each and every one of us, which a lot of the people who are watching us are musicians because mm -hmm. of Rich's background. Sure. Them coming into town, what do you think the best thing that they could start doing? What's goal number one in your opinion? Well, I would say two things. I, I want to say practicing more. I want to say who they associate with. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. What, what would it be? I think it would be like you kind of hit the nail on the head. For the, Perceived so value. Making, hanging around people That's that right. make you better. That's right. Raise your level. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, there's an intangible. I think when talent is balanced, the, the where you win is an intangible. We can't measure it, but we can yeah. feel it. So think of trust, chemistry, likability, connectivity, uh, energy, the transfer. Of I, I like that list. Yeah. One more time. So, yeah. so you have so you have raw talent. For me, raw talent is everywhere. Mm -hmm. What separates the men from the boys is honing the raw talent. That's right. So because hard work will always outweigh raw raw mm -hmm. talent. Absolutely. Did you do you believe? I yes. think. And and then you mentioned um, connectivity. Connectivity. So being. We were talking about like on the interwebs, promoting yourself as a product, as a brand. Yes. Like I am not an air cleaning device. I am right. a Q-tip. Right. So like I would hope that I would, in my space, I am the Q-tip of modern country drumming. Right. I mean, I would at least want to be uh, one of the more expensive ear cleaning devices. Yes. You right? With the perceived value. With the perceived value. Well, well the perceived value is I want people to think specialist, not generalist. You know, I really think you're an entrepreneur. After looking at everything, your body of work, you're really an entrepreneur right. with a very special skill set in certain things, right? right? It may be you're great at promotions, you're obviously great at your craft, but when people begin to see themselves as entrepreneurs, they take lower level resources to higher levels of productivity. But they have a very special skill set. Mm -hmm. And most of the people I coach, which could be real estate agents, mortgage originators, they see themselves as realtors or mortgage people. They don't see themselves as entrepreneurs with a very special skill set. Right. See, I never say I'm just a coach. I'm really an entrepreneur that's got a very special skill set in taking uh, and taking complicated growth and making it simple. Or a very special skill set in getting a group of people towards some dominant focus they can't get to on their own, mm -hmm. right? And that does take a very special skill set to do that. So and when I can get you thinking like that, then that decommoditizes you, so to speak, right? Because yeah. because I go down to Nashville and there's thousands of people coming to Nashville, and I'm always looking. You call it the it factor. The it factor. And and I can you can't teach that. I know because I can typically go to Nashville and I love country music absolutely from the time I was you know an early, a young boy. So will we find you occasionally on a Saturday night at Tootsie's? Well, <laughs> you used to a lot <laughs> until my wife, who's probably watching this, cut me out on that, yeah. right? And uh, unless she comes with me, she won't let me wander down on my own on a Saturday mm -hmm. night anymore. But uh, but but I can typically say that person has the makings of greatness. Right. The way they connect, you know, talked about the connectivity, the way they connect with the audience, the way they tell stories, the way they communicate. And obviously, the pure, raw talent that you see, right? Right. And, and then I can look at a person and go, I'm not in the music business, but that person I don't think is going to make it. Now, I may be wrong, but typically, it's, it's interesting that I'll see a person and then they make it big mm -hmm. in a few years because there's something that is radiating out. Yeah, even if they might not be a great singer, which can all be solved today with technology. Yes, yes. And you know, uh, you know, people are getting record deals based on model, their yeah. models. Yes. Their models, um, they're marketable, yes. they have huge social numbers, yes. and we could get them great songs, we can put them in a, in a get great studio musicians, we can tune their vocal, and that's, that's where things have gone in the music right. business. Yeah. But I still do feel like, especially in like the drumming world, this 
you have to be able to play your instrument. Yes. You know, and that's the thousands and thousands of hours. And then when I met Jim a decade ago, uh -huh. I, um, I was interested in doing voiceover. Uh huh. Jim is, and one of the many things he does is he's a fantastic voiceover artist. So we started talking about that and we formed this bond that he's, he's been kind of like my business coach in the sense of you need to market, you need to strategize, right. you need to figure out a way, right. you use the socials. And I kind of fearlessly have done that and I had a lot of haters and we're, I'm finally sure. over the, a tipping point there. But the funny yeah. thing is, is that before you came here, we we're mm -hmm. recording a video for Rich's upcoming book. Mm -hmm. And even in the email days, you got haters before yeah. social media. Yeah. I would just do an email and say to all my to my network of right. people that I was meeting, right. in a sincere, natural way, an organic way, and saying, "Hey guys, I'm in town this Monday night, the 21st. I'm off the road with Al Dean, and I'm going to be at the Broken Spoke Saloon. I'm doing a showcase at seven o'clock. Come on out." Right. What I was trying to accomplish there was two things: to let people see me mm -hmm. and my product yes. in a natural environment. Yes and to create a community of people. Yeah. Well, you're doing everything that if I were coaching you, you should be doing. Great. And, and what I tell, well. Could, can you tell more people, paying for it, right? could you tell more people <laughs> that. Not even paying, this, I'm paying for it for you now. Right? That's, so thanks, I, I, thanks. He's in the coaching program. This drummer, <laughs> this is the strong, this is the biggest hurdle I've, hurdle I've had to, to get over in the last decade is, is how can this drummer bring a message to my sales team? That's right. To my corporation, yes. that's going to benefit them to to warrant the fee. Yes, you know, and it's like that's what I'm up against. Yeah, and but it's getting easier yeah. and it's getting Absolutely. easier. But uh, not what I like is that there's not a lot of drummers that are effective communicators that are in the motivational speaking space. That's right. So I'm super excited about it. I just got to keep moving well, forward. Well, I'm a big believer in an outsider. I think every person needs an outsider looking at their life because you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. Yeah. When I wrote my last book, Everybody Needs a Coach in Life, which became uh, an Amazon bestseller, it, you know, one of my one of my people said, I don't want you to use a traditional book publish, publicist. I want you to use a mu music publicist. Oh, wow. I want you to use somebody outside of the arena. And I was like, I'm in because everybody just does the same thing over and over. I'm looking for something creative. I'm looking for I'm looking for an outside perspective. I'm looking for someone who comes in and says, "Man, I don't see it like this at all," right? And I think that's the value you would bring is for lack of a better term, the performance moment. How do how do we bring the the hype of getting up every day, right? In the business world because like I said, we don't have that show every night. Mm -hmm. We don't have something and in sports, I had a game every Tuesday and Friday. It's a natural high. Yes. It's a nervous energy that was positive. Well, in the business world, it's very redundant. Yeah, and if you're not nervous, there's something Absolutely. wrong. There has to be an element of nervous there, or otherwise you've just you've lost. You're not. You don't care anymore. And you were talking about the haters. I say, if your dreams are not big enough that someone's trying to keep you from having them or take them away from you, they're not big enough. Right. And you know they're getting big when people are trying to keep you from getting them. Yeah. Or or take them away from you. Yes. Everything else is small. I believe it was Grant Cardone that said, haters, bring them on, Donkey Kong. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it now. <laughs> hey, and they say, if you have haters, you're doing something right. Yeah, I'm actually going to be with Cardone in Monday, uh, on Monday in Miami. Okay. And he and I have done several tell things we, together. Uh, tell him we say hello. We should be well aware of this. I, I, I will. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually, my platform, Monster <laughs> Producer, is also going to be inside of his new platform. I think nice. me, Damon John, uh, a lot of big people and you're going to be able to buy that platform and get my online academy as well so we're doing some love it. stuff right together yeah, it's been a huge huge impact on me uh, Monster 10x producer. is such such an unbelievable action concept that uh, we could learn a lot from I love it he's owned that and he, it's become an, uh, an adjective pretty much a, a verb yeah you know, and you know what are the, what are, I think one of the mistakes in, and I don't mind sharing my mistakes at all when I wrote everybody needs a coach in life is I brought out another book very uh, close to that called million dollar follow-up and the guys coaching me out of New York City said, oh my gosh, if we would have if we would have started coaching you six months ago, we would have forced you to come out with million dollar follow-up because it's an action. Yes. Everybody needs a coach in life as a statement. So tell us about follow-up. How that could apply to a musician? Well, I think here's what I think. I think it's one of the most underestimated things in the world. Statistics tell me seven to fifteen touches eighty percent of the time to get another person to take action. Seven to fifteen. Okay. Eighty percent of the time. Most people go three touches, four touches, they give up. And I say it's not just about sales. Me trying to sell you something. You're out on the road, you're doing your thing, you're busy. And what's happening is my, my neocortex in my brain is pitching to your croc brain. 
So you're busy and you're just like pushing me away, right? And so the reason you have to go seven touches is because I got to get you to the point where you're processing that information. You're going, man, I like that little bald headed pit bull. He can help me, right? <laughs> he can, right. So it may take me seven touches to get your attention, keep your attention. I believe Vaynerchuk is right here. We are day trading for attention. Mm -hmm. So I tell people not just follow up in sales, follow up on your dreams, follow up on strategic partnership, mm -hmm. follow up like I see your the the, the, the camps you're doing here. Right. You know the things you're doing there. Well, there may be a person out there in the world who's very interested, right? But right. if you hit them one time, they may go, I like it, and then they check it. Yeah, I, I'm interested, but then I lost. he lost my attention. So when you go back to them consistently, yes. and I have found that tr to be true, it may take me seven touches. Sometimes I, I would love for it to be a one-call close on everybody. Mm. Uh, but we're closing major deals around the country, and typically we got to explain it, we got to articulate it, we got to show how we can solve a problem better than anybody else. Right. So if your sales teams are not going seven touches, they're really... They're really not in the ballgame from my perspective. It's similar. I would say this, that the people that I moved to Nashville 20 years ago, people that would not consider me for a job, mm -hmm. 20 years later, mm -hmm. I'm on speed dial. Yes. But it took the 20 years for them to see me vetted over and over and over again as the guy that can come in and solve that problem in yes. an effective way for, for a reasonable price. Um, it took all that time. Well, money changes hands when problems are solved, right? The bigger the problem, the more money people will pay to solve it. Yeah. Your consistency of showing up consistently was that follow-up, right? And here's the cool part. Now that you've become a person of interest, now you're a buyer versus a seller. And I tell people, this is when you're in a really coveted position because now you've gone from trying to sell yourself convince, whatever, manipulate, whatever you typically have to do. Hire to, me, hire to, me. To yeah. now people, yeah. you're in demand. So now people are calling you. You have now gone from the, the seller to the buyer, wow. which is a very powerful position to be in, I especially anytime you're negotiating. You have something they want, right? And they're willing to pay a premium price. And for that's it. where all businesses want to be. That's person of interest. That's really what you're becoming is such a person of interest that demand is coming in. It's no different than going to Hollywood as a young star trying to pitch yourself to, till now you're now you're performing for 20 million bucks and getting scripts every week right and you're picking and choosing which ones you want yes now you've gone from the seller to the buyer now you're in a position of leverage mm. yeah we got Randy Purdue I know Randy he's uh, in. fantastic he's uh, he's just, and this is a lot of people are starting to uh, see the gist of what we're doing here <laughs> uh, rich explain your crash course and how it motivates people mm. Oh, Randy, you know about my, Randy, Randy, Randy's been to my clinics, he's been to my master classes, he's hosted master classes, uh, but real quick, I really want the focus to be on Coach Bird, but uh, my Crash Course for Success, you can check out CrashCourseForSuccess.com, mm -hmm. basically Crash is an acronym, I developed the concept 12 years ago, it stands for Commitment, Relationships, nice. Attitude, Skill, and Hunger, so anybody, mm -hmm. in any season of their life, in any walk of life can use this mm -hmm. to be more successful, so having a massive commitment to your product, your family, your team, your skill set, mm -hmm. um, cultivating lifelong, sincere, mutually beneficial relationships, having an award-winning attitude, a flexible, being able to take direction and not being offended, developing the skill sets that you need to be successful in life, and then having a hunger, that hunger like a fire that burns in your belly yeah. to be successful. And I, I always say that passion is your engine and hard work is the fuel. Mm -hmm. And if you love something and you're passionate about it, it's going to be easy to work hard. And the harder you work, the easier it gets to be more more successful yeah. so it's a perpetuating cycle yeah. so that's crash and so you know, some of my clients are Cisco Johnson & Johnson Hewlett yeah. Packard mom and pop businesses colleges keynotes I will come speak just about anywhere crash course for success.com I think nice. could be something a little collaboration well, yeah, we could do a thing where I can open for you with the flames and the fire and the it. sticks I and then it. you know we can but it's Let's awesome yeah I'm in uh, I'm an easy sale I will I will be an opening act yes <laughs> well there there is a power in the music, obviously, I, I just think there's an energy there. You know, we have a greatness factory, and I'm building greatness factories all over the country. And these okay. are these are unique destination locations that that are geared toward helping you grow the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. Okay. So I want you to imagine one place that has a gym, a spa, a training facility. So we're talking but, Maui. We're talking. Well, we're, we're we're starting locally in Tennessee, but then we will franchise these to other parts of the country. That's great. The and greatness factory. The greatness factory. So you go is a week long. You get your head on straight. You get a. It could be. It, it's it's basically a local place that when you make a decision to become great, instead of flying to California and spending 5,000 bucks, there's a local place that you go. There's coaching programs, there's different events going on there constantly. 
and instead of going to a gym and then here or training and then here and then it's all in one place mm. and so we say we manufacture greatness wow and so that's okay. the newest thing that we're doing that uh, we've already got interest from all over the country of people wanting them we've got interest in Houston Texas Baltimore Dallas Texas the concept there will be it's nine revenue drivers this thing drives revenue in nine different ways and so people can make their own Revenue plus bring me there to maybe teach monster producer to kick it off. Love it. So you got personal trainers, you got the masseuse, you got the you got the business coach, you got the all in one place. The graphic designer, web designer person yes. you can meet Podcast with. Podcast studio. Like, oh. So you know, lots of people are looking to use video today to promote themselves, but they don't know where to go. Well, the funny thing on the video thing is, is that uh, you know, whenever you post a photo on Instagram, people are like, "Oh, great, I love avocado," yeah. and then you post a video of a person eating an avocado with a spoon, <laughs> and it's like ten times as many. Yeah. It's like way more effective absolutely you know as long as it's short and provides value it has to be short because people have no attention span and we're using video <laughs> you know we're using video now a lot in our yeah. follow-up mm -hmm. a lot in our follow-up so once I go speak our sales team have loaded videos to see in they listen and then they send those videos out and that's something I think people should be doing a lot more yeah because that's the closest thing I can get to this right here yeah a phone won't do it a text message won't do it mm -hmm. right an email won't do it but the video will bring me back and rekindle that initial attraction, uh, the, the business chemistry that we have. Yeah, and I love the fact that you have all these training modules that you can be that can be downloaded or streamed at your leisure from any device. And this is something that Jim and I have been talking about for years. I basically took my retirement and I <laughs> spent it on a system called Drumming in the Modern World, yeah, yeah, and it's fun. a it's a straight download. So you can have my 20 years of knowledge in the Nashville music business. And the idea is that people they think that like the music business is dying a slow death it's definitely shifted it's definitely mm -hmm. changing and for say a musician to want to come to Nashville and do just that mm -hmm. they've got to have some mailbox money a, a revenue stream they they're making money while they're sleeping right. that's what's kind of hoping what drumming in the modern world would could maybe be right. and then if something tells me there might be a genesis something beyond that mm -hmm. that's similar to your words more about business coaching life coaching success coach right well, we have an online academy that's very highly interactive. Uh, Cardone and I have the same platform, Lightspeed, Tony Robbins, when Zig Ziglar was alive, right? Um, Damon John. We all use the same platform, mm -hmm. which is Lightspeed out of Las Vegas. Okay. And that is very uh, high-end virtual training, right? Where so do you go there to film it and they... You, you could film it there. Okay. Or you could film it like we have our own studio like you do. So we film it there and we upload it. So there's there's speed to that. Okay. But a person could get coached by me anytime, anywhere, any device, 24 hours so a day. So you go through their servers. Yes. Okay. They basically host all of our content. That's, and it's super fast. Super fast. You can download it on your phones. Smart. Uh, and, and we are typically selling this to individuals who are out there in the world who can't come to Tennessee to see me live or... Uh, I'm not on the road somewhere that they're at, mm -hmm. or people that uh, want it at a lower price point. You know, if they can't right. pay the 400 a month, they can't pay 99 a month to get the downloadable version, and it's organic. Every time you upload content, there's new content in there monthly, so it's never static. Yes, it's an ongoing deal. And I think this is where a lot of training is. Imagine selling that to 15,000 people at one time, because mm -hmm. that's really where we're going is to sell to 15,000 mortgage originators Can you time. coach me on how to sell 15,000 <laughs> drumming in the modern world packages? We're there, now, the, the, now the interesting thing is that, that is that we're just in a situation where the arts, we all know that like, you know, there's it's 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 for dreamers and they're it, and on the front side of an artistic career, a creative career, there is no money. Yeah. So for a drummer to say, "Oh my god, $140.99." That's right. Oh my God, Rich, is this going to be a value? And I just say, this is everything I know. Right. But it's just that's a lot of money for somebody who's playing gigs and fifty dollars here and fifty dollars there, and they've got to pay their. Yeah. Got to, it's tough. It is, and I want to, and I do want to speak to that because I hear that a lot. Three ninety nine a month. Oh my gosh. For the first training I went to, it was a twenty five hundred dollar course to learn the seven habits of highly effective people. Wow. It was five days, and I went to my own mother and borrowed the money because I didn't have the money, and I said, I will pay you back. But this week can change my life, right? Just like a, a drummer out there, a week with you could change their life. Right. A course with you could change their life. So I'm a big believer when people say I can't afford it, it's because they don't understand the difference between assets and liabilities. I say I will find money in your budget. You're spending on something that is a complete liability to you. Starbucks. You can't do anything to change your life, right? I mean, it's true. Right, right. No, man, and, and it, so, so what they don't understand is the power I heard it, this is a funny story because I'm sitting in a hotel one night, late at night, I can't sleep, 
and a televangelist is on. And I'm watching this televangelist, and he says this, you're just one person away from a new season in your life. He was almost good enough for me to give some money, Rich. Yeah. I, mean, I almost sent some money in. But, but I never forgot that because he was right. It's the power of one, man. It's the yeah. power of one relationship. It's the power of one door being open. It's the power of the right person seeing a person in Nashville on a given night, right? Oh, I always it's hoped the, that that guy would walk through and see exactly. me play. It's the, yeah. it's the power because the one person that sees you, like my relationship with Cardone has helped me in all kinds. We're still getting customers today because of my relationship with Cardone. Right. It's the power of one person. Right. It's the power of Covey being an influence on my life. You know, So I really don't think you got to go out there and get 10,000 relationships you, you have to go get one powerful relationship and then get two and then mm. get three. So that investment in you is worth whatever you charge. It don't matter. Find the money. Borrow the money. Put it on a credit card. And you very seldom hear me say that. But that's how important one, you know, learning the 20 years from you could be, could speed me up. And yeah, what would Dave Ramsey say about putting that on a credit card? <laughs> but <laughs> He would not agree with But that. I will tell you this. <laughs> but that's but, okay, right? I, I, the three times that I, I was living in Dallas, Texas in my early 20s, and I auditioned for three big bands three weeks apart, and each of those auditions involved getting a, a flight and a hotel yes. in taxi cabs. Back then, there was no Uber yes. on a credit card. Yes. And I was investing in myself. Yes. And I was taking a, a, a big chance. And we have to invest in ourselves first. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not going to bet on you, why should other people bet on you, right? The first yeah. sale you got to make every day is to your own self. Yeah. And and so, the, big, the biggest thing you're talking about there is the mindset of a guy coming into town mm -hmm. not seeing themselves as a business. Right. And that's 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 one of the biggest things you probably see all the time is that I just need to get a gig. Well, you're not seeing yourself as a business. Mm -hmm. You're market. gonna need to get a lot of gigs. Learn, and learning they, how to be a salesperson first. Yeah. Marketer. Yes. Then salesperson. Business person. Then whatever it is you do. Well, then here's a great question for you. I get this all the time. Will the crash concept work for somebody that is an introvert? How can someone be a natural salesperson? if they are an introvert. Yeah. I said, you've got to get out every night and shake hands and crash parties and let people know you exist. Yeah. How does that work if somebody's not comfortable in, in, in groups? Yeah. Well, think of an introvert as, as an inversion. And it's really, in some ways, I don't want to say a selfish play because in certain environments, I'm introverted. Yeah. In certain environments, I extrovert, which just means to push out, right? And I think confidence is the memory of success. It's an ongoing systematic practice of something, right? We can build it, we can maintain it, we can protect it. And an introverted person many times uses that as an excuse not to step out. So mm -hmm. think about this way. Insecure people always contract and retreat. Confident people always won't risk an opportunity. You see the difference? Right. So you can build that, but I would tell a person that's introverted, hey, I agree with you, there's sometimes I'm introverted. There's sometimes I don't want to go up and talk. There's to sometimes people. people I want people to be introverted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I'm on a, when I'm on a plane, I'm introverted. Yes. I don't talk to people. I don't want to talk to people. I'm typically and people are always. That's my me. plane language. Like everywhere you go, yeah. Don't you want to talk to people? No. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I pull in, but a lot of times I push out. But uh, I haven't always been that way. Mm -hmm. These are learned skills that you can learn, right? We okay. take in operations people. Like a lot of people on my team are operations people. They're behind the scenes. And I said, first thing I said, you got a minimum sales goal every month to work with me at 15000 a month. you got to go out and create 15000 of revenue or you can't work for me. Oh, but I'm an operations person. I've never sold anything. I can teach you how to sell. A and you're going to increase your own revenue. You're going to make twenty to 30000 more a year working for me if you'll go out and sell 15000 a month. Yeah. Right? Do you want to do it now? If you'll watch me talk to people, it's not that hard. we got a great product. You know, go out and share with people what we believe. Go out and tell them what we do. Tell them how we could do it different. Give mm -hmm. them the success stories we've got, and ask them to enroll. Right, yeah. and they will. And so sometimes it's a person that just it's in their mindset that they can't do it. But every person in the world is selling something. Well, can't is just such a bad word. Yeah, it is a bad. It's word. It's just a filthy word. I mean, for a musician, I'm just trying to think how I can practically apply this because sure. Nashville is the third fastest growing city in America, and it is the last place on the planet for a healthy music business. Mm. So somebody that's say moving here from say um, a Berkeley College of Music or a University of North Texas, they're 23 years old. They've got a pretty good skill set. They got to go out. They got to force themselves to be an extrovert. They got to go ask to meet people, sit in. Mm -hmm. When they actually play their instrument, that's their product. Mm -hmm. And then they have to do the follow up, mm -hmm. the handshake, look people in the eye. Right. Thanks for letting me play. Here's my business card. Can we please keep in touch? Yes. There's so many people. I see 90% of the people, they're uncomfortable with this. Yes. 
Well, and, and you know, I was thinking of the word resilience while you were talking, the resilience factor. How do you build bounce back in people when you've been knocked down every day? How do you, how do you teach get back up? How do you teach 10,000 Is it hours? learned or is it something that the gumption, the the The, 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 the reason I think tenacity. it can be learned, and this is my own personal experience, is because for a decade I was coaching 14 to 18 year old kids and not not all of them came with batteries included. Right. Not all of them came with from, from great parents yeah. or two parent homes or money and we literally had to take them and that's why I began to call that the, my little greatness factory is I could put them in our system and teach them bounce back and teach them these things because some of them came shy, introverted, didn't want to take risk. And through the system and process, we at least brought out some of that killer instinct in them. Yeah. And I'm trying to do that with my with the people on my team. Yeah. Is is how do you have a killer instinct? How do you teach a kid to be relentless? You know, even without the best talent Earlier, you were talking about, I was thinking about what I scored on my ACT and when I was getting my master's, how low I scored on all those things. But, but here's the interesting part. The valedictorian in my high school class is still trying to figure out what he wants to be when he grows up. And we're both 40 years old. Yeah. So he beat me every day on IQ. I beat him every day on EQ. That's what, that's what I need my daughter to know, the right. EQ. How to get back up when you've been knocked down? How to be relentless? How to pursue something with a passion? Fall in love with rejection. Yes. You know it's really funny. I don't know if you know this about me, but like here I am in my midlife, and I discovered another creative outlet for myself, mm -hmm. and I've been acting for two and a half years, mm -hmm. and it makes me makes my soul very happy, mm -hmm. and it's a different creative outlet, and I'm not learning acting at the strip mall acting club here in Lebanon, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I fly my butt to Hollywood yes. and I swim with the sharks. That's right. And uh, it's that entire industry is based on rejection. Yes. And I love it. Yes. I just think to myself, you know what? They need actors of all shapes, sizes, and ages. It's something I could do the rest of my Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And I'm enjoying it and I'm in the game. I already have a day job. Yes. This is just icing on the cake fun. Yeah. Um, and so it's been great, but that is, you. it's all no. Well, I, I want the, the viewer out there to get this. In my opinion, I learned this at 25. Went through a very bad breakup. Thought I was going to get married. Bought the engagement ring. The girl broke up with me. Had to take the engagement ring back. Now, you've never done anything and felt rejection until you take it back. And the person at the jeweler says, why are you bringing this back? Is it a, is it a you know, like a canceled... I'm like, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah, right? Why are you asking me this? You know why I'm, I'm bringing it I'm back. Like, yeah, I mean, she actually asked that question. But, but during that period of time, I met another person who was just a friend of mine. And, she, and I write about this in the new book, and she said, the way you're looking at this is all wrong. She said, there is no such thing as rejection. She may not want what you have, but there will be lots of people who want exactly what you have. Right. Seven billion people on the planet. There are now nine other planets that could support life. There's a lot of people out there, right? I might have a Martian lover? Yes. See? <laughs> Amazing! Yeah. Yes. We didn't know we were going to get into this. Damn! You? Martian lovers and coaches. Martian love. I wonder how they do it. But, 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 you know, when she said that to me, I can't tell you guys how pivotal that was to my life. Because now, when a person doesn't want my coaching, when, a person, when I call on a person they're not interested, all I say is, look, they're not interested in what I've got, but there will be a lot of people who is. Yep. And once you know that... You'll never have call reluctance. You'll never have reluctance to talk to another person. Once you get that there is no such thing as rejection, and, and they just want something different. Yeah. My wife, want, if she wanted a six foot two, she wanted a guy look like you, she wouldn't have me, right? Okay? <laughs> I wish I was six foot two. Well, I'm just talking with the oh, hair, my hair the got good you. looking, oh. but, but, but she wanted me. You know, and my wife is beautiful, and she chose me because of my confidence, because of where I was going in the world, does right? She, now, does she have a sister? <laughs> no, she doesn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, she does have some single friends. Oh, good, 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 and good. they're all beautiful, too. I right? love it. I love it. So, but that's my point about rejection. And, and, you know, once you get this, guys, I'm telling you, man. And, you, and, and you know, that's kind of in you to go to Hollywood. The lesson there to me is you got to get proximity to the power, man. The, you got to get must be present to win. You got to get proximity to where the action is. Yes. And if the, you, you can't, like you said, you can't be an actor in Lebanon. And Tennessee. can't, can't in Ohio. You got to no. go to Hollywood. And yeah. too many people are, are sitting right here. I think it's ninety percent of people live within ten miles of where they were born. They don't get the concept of up and movement and circulation and going away and coming back and. You, you know, yeah. they don't get, they got to put themselves in a position to fail. God, that makes me sad. I, I, as much as I travel, I basically play the drums for free and I get paid to travel. Right. I've never unpacked my suitcase for 20 years. I've never had an unpacked suitcase. Mm. That takes a special kind of yes, mindset. It does. But I will do this. This is, I want to go where, wherever I have to go to do this, mm -hmm. you know, because I found that passion yeah. at a young age, which is, which is, I'm so grateful for that. Hey, do we have any, some questions? I want to make sure that we don't. I, Brad from the, Dawson, Brad Dawson says, hey guys, 
I am pursuing my craft intensely every day, but how do I get my family to get on board mm. with pursuing my dream as a musician over the night? This five? is a big one. I'm going to let you answer this. Mm. The, the, my buddy Tim Story, who, who's called the comeback coach in Hollywood, and he says that they're on TMZ, he's coaching them, right? <laughs> and uh, and he, he said something that was incredibly powerful. He said, first you have revelation of something, big aha moment, right? This is your calling. This is what you're supposed to do. Then you have conviction and then you take action. And I think if you're in a family situation, some of the most resistance you're ever gonna get in your life are from people closest to you, right? Yeah. Jesus faced the same problems why he did very few miracles in, in his hometown, right? And, uh, and so I think you, you're gonna have to convince the people closest to you that this this will pay off in the long run, but they got to bet on you, right? It, it 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 really sucks to go out into the world and try to pursue something and then go home and be, get get your confidence beat up mm. by the person who you're living with. So so I mean, and it happens because they just don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough one to answer, but I would just tell a man sell that conviction and say bet on me because we're going to make this work, right? Yeah. We're going to make this work somehow. Yeah, and it ain't going to be easy, but anything worth having is not going to be easy. Yeah. I've heard all those the sweet stories of the you know successful studio musicians or rock and roll musicians and and it's like yeah, I believe in you baby and we're gonna move there and we're gonna make it happen and 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 ha but you have to have that support system yeah if you don't have the support system you are up it's an uphill mm -hmm. battle it's hard enough as it is mm -hmm. I think one of the best uh, pieces of advice I've ever heard was from Vaynerchuk when mm -hmm. somebody uh, out of the blue came up to a taxi cab he was in mm -hmm. and she said you know hey your three best words of advice and he's like three best words yeah. He goes, you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. You, <laughs> you're going to die. So while you're Wait, here, quick you better sure. do what you want yeah, to yeah. do because it's a long life if you're doing what you're, what's not fun. Right. Listen, the stats say 67% of people in the United States are disengaged with their work. Hmm. See work as the distribution channel for your talent. Hmm. Work is how you distribute your God-given talents to the world. And when you distribute them at very high levels, the world rewards you in the form of love and money and recognition and affirmation, reputation. Money is actually the sixth way we get paid. We get paid in love, we get paid in appreciation, we get paid in affirmation, we yeah. get paid in reputation, referrals, and then we get paid in money. I love that. But Right? And yeah. so we look at it as I'm not, like my first coaching job was $199.50 for a year. But I got paid an opportunity. Right? I knew every day at my current job was an interview for my next job. Yeah. And so I give it my best shot and what do I, how do I get paid? I get paid with a bigger job. I get paid with 10 times increase in my income, which was 200 to 2,000 by the way. Mm -hmm. And then 2,000 to 24,000. You understand right. what I'm saying? Sure. And so I think the way you're looking at it is input in and output is I'm gonna make 80,000 my first year. Look at all the greats and look at their first three to five years. I lost 35,000 bucks my first year in business, minus 35. Um, I, I was 13 and 16 my first year of coaching. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody talks about that part. They, they, they talk about where you are today versus where you, they should go back to that moment and say, look, I could have quit. Jim, I, I could have yeah. given well, up. Or are you lucky? Yeah. 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 Those great, those yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they don't see what, what it took to get to where you are. Oh, yeah. Then they see the tip of the iceberg. You know, that's success. But right. underneath is the, yeah. that's really absolutely. the late nights. And the and I tell people, look at this this whole thing that I do mm -hmm. is not for the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. Following your, your true passion, I've missed weddings and births and mm -hmm. funerals and graduations. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yeah. The only time I've ever missed a show in the last 20 years was when my grandparents passed away. And I sent Miranda. Lambert's drummer to fill in for me mm -hmm. and I went to go to my parent grandparents funeral it was like the notebook yes. but literally you know you're going on stage with uh, well the show goes on the show must and, go on and, and you know I think I use entertainers a lot because I say a professional doesn't have the luxury of, of listening to their feelings or calling in sick yeah the difference between amateurs and professionals is amateurs listen to their feelings and professionals don't listen to their feelings they show up whether they feel like it or not right yeah. because the show's still got to go on and and I think this is very critical for a person out there to to ask this question are you an amateur or are you a professional because you can't just call in sick and say I don't want to perform tonight right just because I don't feel good nope. so you got to show up consistently and I think that's very critical for the people watching yeah what did, what did Alan say he said 99% of success is showing up yeah absolutely you know so show up with a big smile on your face and a firm handshake and a willingness to take direction and give 150% that's half the battle right didn't you actually at one point use your drum cases as uh, vomit basins mm. yes <laughs> I was I had food poisoning and, and, a, and, a, and a, a fever but no one else could play the show so it was like playing it like every stroke of the symbol was like 
like certain death, and you're just like one, two, uh, and you see, yeah, you know, yeah. just it's yeah, and you're yeah, green, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. it, you you got to do it. The guy needs yeah. a, the guy needs a drummer, absolutely. You know, and people paid the hard ticket to be there, and and you got to be there. You know, something that when you were talking about the seven ways we get six or seven ways we get paid money, there's still even with me, there's a guilt. Mm-hmm associated with money. If you're doing great things in your life and you're giving and you're giving and giving, we should be happy to accept yeah. money even if it's large amounts, of yes. it, right? What's your concept on money? Well, I think we've got this wrong. You can't expand without money. You can't grow without money. You can't help people without money. You can't contribute to charities without money. You can't give to the church without money. You can't do anything without money. And and it has been I grew up in a small town, scarcity minded you know, and when I really began to make money and buy bigger houses and have nice things, I, I felt that resentment, even from my own family. You know, can't you be satisfied with this? Why do you need a house that big? Why do you have to have these cars? I travel on a Mercedes Sprinter, nice bus, right? Yeah. I want an airplane because I travel so much. Yes. And, but 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 listen, Fun. what I hear is, oh, you, you must be too good. You've, you've risen above your racing. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's what I would tell you. With the money, we employ more people. We create more jobs. We expand our message. Without it, I coach people, uh, I coach pastors of churches. They can't expand and grow and build buildings with that money. Yeah. So I think, you know, we hear people, money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of, the root of all evil. And, and it's the fuel you need. Because with you, you, you got to get all these people to the places. they got to have buses. you got to have equipment to perform that show. Yes. And you cannot do that without money, okay? Right. And for all the nonprofits out there, you can't grow it without money. So it's still, right? It's value creation and we're being compensated in the form of money. Yeah. Well, money is the byproduct of what we do. We serve people. Mm-hmm. Money is the byproduct of that. Think about that. Yeah. yeah. That's an echo of value. The, the bigger mm-hmm. the value, the, the more money you... So I always say money changes hands when problems are solved. If I'm going to watch you perform, what problem is that solving for me? The biggest thing I get from entertainment is inspiration. Yeah. When I go to concerts, the creative side of me comes out. I love seeing people at their highest peak of performance because it inspires me. Sure. And there's a part of me that wants to be on that stage, right? Yeah. And there's a part of every person in that audience that says, man, I always wanted to be like that. Yeah. I always wanted to have that exchange. You know, I, I remember going to an Eric Church concert once, and he said something that no other entertainer had ever said. He said, for the next two, two and a half hours, I'm going to give you everything I've got. Ever how long it was, hour or whatever. Right. He said, but I only ask one thing. You give me everything back. Ooh. <laughs> and he challenged us. I love that. And when he challenged us, we got up. Every person in the arena got up, and it was this exchange of energy back and forth. He, did, he would not allow us to just sit there. Yeah. And, and 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 absorb his talent. I love it. He said, "Get up and give it back to me, man." I love that. And when he did, we responded. Well, he's very uh, committed to his. I mean, he's he stomps his foot so hard. <laughs> he broke his foot. I know. I know. He I broke something. his foot. He <laughs> he was on the road with us like for like, two tours. Yeah, so yeah. We, we know all those guys. So it's yeah, yeah. Really, really great. Um, this has just been so fun and enlightening. Where are we in the hour? We, I know we can go over an hour if we're inspired. You're, uh, but. you're you're about twelve minutes away from sixty. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, Jut Fierce. I'm going to butcher your name, dude. I'm sorry. Jut Firetag. <laughs> He's from out of the state. How can I find a big gig? Been playing drums 20 years and I have experience in everything. I'm ready to go. Don't drink, smoke, or do drugs. Music and health is my whole life. So how does he find the big gig? Zorro wrote the book called The Big Gig. You can go to thebiggig.com. I mean, he, and it's like you—you you would be surprised that the, the the gigs you think are the biggest gigs. Yeah. Interesting um, question, though. What is the big? Gig? What is the what is the big gig? I mean, define that. Are you a member of a band like Larry Mullen, living in a castle in Scotland, or mm-hmm. are you the drummer for Jason Aldean that you know lives in in Brantioc? I mean, it's mm-hmm. like you know, I'm a sideman. I'm I'm a crucial piece of that puzzle, yes. um, but I am not on. I am not living in a castle, right, in Scotland. Yeah. So yeah. Ireland. Ireland, but, sorry. But I think it's all relative. Yes. I go back to the concept of every day your current job is an interview for your next job. You know, I, I know that if I do a great job where I currently am, the stages are going to get bigger, the audiences are going to get bigger, right. right? And the opportunity is going to be there. And I think some people don't understand it that way. You know, they're waiting on the big breakthrough. Well, you don't know when the breakthrough is going to happen. All you can do is like the flywheel and the doom loop, man. You're building momentum and you're building momentum till one day you wake up and you're there. Yeah. The night I won a championship, which was the biggest coaching moment in my life, we were the number one team, right, in the state of Tennessee. There was nobody else that was better than us. 
Well, I couldn't have predicted when that was going to happen. Right. All I could do was build and build, and one day you wake up and you're looking and you're there, man. Because yeah, it like, takes a long time. Like I just know that like like the the things I've done as a side man, and even like my relationship with Jason Aldean, it's never gone down. But it's the slowest climb up the roller coaster yes. ever. Yes. And then before you know it, people are like, "Well, what is the defining moment? How did you know you had made it?" And I was mm -hmm. like. I don't know, have I made it? I mean, there's cool moments where you're like, wow, I'm backing up Bob Seger, or I'm mm -hmm. playing on a television show with Brian Adams, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. But um, the only thing you could do is just be excellent 100% of the time, mm -hmm. just be great, have that yeah. be your mindset, never mail in a performance, never, and, and mm -hmm. good things will happen. Yeah, you know, you said never mail in a performance, the largest contract I ever signed, I did a workshop and three people showed up. I've had and, three people and, show up to a and, drum clinic. And and my assistant yeah. said, cancel it, you've had a long day. And I said, no, they paid their money. I don't mail things in, right? Yep. And I gave it to them. And, and at the break, she came up and said, this is exactly what our people need. Yes. And it was a four-year deal worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I would have never happened if I would have canceled for three yeah, people. Yeah, three people. Yep. So ne your, your advice is spot on, man. Never, ever mail it in if you're playing for one person or if you're playing for 10,000 people. Yes. You show up and you, you show, I say show up, grow up, and deliver the goods every time. Show up, grow up, and deliver deliver the goods, always. Like, I, like, you know, I just remember us playing for five people, five drunks at the bar. Yeah. But we give it everything like it's Madison Square Garden, and then they, right. and they come back later, uh, two weeks later, there's 50 people, and then 500 people, That's and right. then 5,000. And and it, it, it's just it's just a natural process. Nice. Yeah, nice. just so really fun. Would you say a lot of people that come to town give it their all and really... I think a lot of people come to town. They go, well, I'm playing down on Lower Broadway for tips, and I was I was the big, heavy first call drummer in my small town America. Now I'm here in Nashville swimming with the sharks, and I'm down here playing for tips. I'm like, so what? Play your heart out. Right. Get more tips, and then have people notice you on that stage. Mm -hmm. Because my dad always gave me amazing advice. He said, "Sun cream rises. It's a law of the universe." Mm -hmm. So you go and you play your heart out, and people started taking notice of me down there 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and I got. I got, I got real jobs, touring jobs. I never went back down to Lower. You're not going to see me playing Lower Broadway right. for tips. I did it, but I didn't move to town saying, I'm too good for this. I had my master's degree. I had my tens of thousands of hours of experience. I didn't say I'm above this. I went and I did it. And I'm finding that millennials who are coming, these damn millennials, they show up <laughs> and, they, and, and, they, and, they, and they say, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, you know, here, here's what I was thinking while you were talking about that. People don't talk about common things. They only talk about uncommon things. If you want to, if you want to cheapen anything, just make it common. And so I, I think, you know, for the, and I think a lot of people come to Nashville and, they, and I know, understand this, they don't trust anybody. But I believe who is coaching you. There are people who know how to help you go from here to there, but you don't trust anybody. Well, I'm going to get screwed by a manager, cause, and you probably will at some point. Mm -hmm. You're going to get screwed by some. I've been screwed in publishing deals that I've done. I've been screwed with business partners that I've had. But the point is, at some point, if you don't trust another person to say, look, I've shown a demonstrated capacity to get this guy from here to there. I've done it with 20 other people. You're going to have to be able to trust people who do can help you, right? Because this is not this is a team sport. I'm yeah. sure you would testify to oh, this. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's there's people who walk into your life, but but I even write about this in Everybody Needs a Coach in Life, and I say two 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 guys come to Nashville to play country music. Here's one goes down to Lower Broadway, beats their head against the wall, does it, gets better, but never make the connections they need to go. Right? One right. guy comes into town, sees the value of co of some, having the right person, still practices, makes the right connection, goes on to be a superstar. Right? And so, which one are you? Right. The person that comes into town and does it, but don't have the networks, or the person that comes in and says, "Look, I can't do this on my own." Why does why is networking have a bad Connotation. I think there's so many networking jerks where they walk around and hand out business cards. Yeah. A true network, right? A right. true network is deep, entrenched networks of influential people who we can pick up the phone and, and call. And like-minded. Yes. And you, to, to network appropriately, you have to have something of value that the other person wants. Right. It's not, here's my business card, call me, Rich. You know, call me when, when but you know. To, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know you. Yeah. It's 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 about adding value and opening doors and having that connectivity. But a lot of people think networking is just a taker's game. Let me give you my card, you call me. It's about giving of time, talent, treasure, value, and where a person says, I want that person in my life. I need that person in my life, mm -hmm. right? And and the highest level people I coach, I'm talking about the multi multi millionaires, they all have one thing in common. They're unbelievable at networking. 
The other night I'm in Houston, Texas with a very successful physician. We're coaching his entire team. The last thing he says, we're sitting at dinner at Capitol Grill. We've been there for three or four hours and he said, Coach, let me make sure I've got all your contact information because I might want to send you something in the mail. He made sure he had email, phone, who's your wife? Now tell me your wife's name. What's your daughter's name? And within a day, I've got something at my house, right, from him. He was a very high-level networking person. He would not let one opportunity go by because he knows the power of connections. Sure. Most people do it on an amateur level. They, they're not even close to being professional networking people. Right. Well, that's the funny thing about musicians coming to town. Say they do mail in their performance. What are the top three things that they could do after the performance? Well, here I go back. That's your follow-up. I right? go back to my million-dollar follow-up. The average statistics tells me seven to fifteen touches, eighty percent of the time. So I use every uh, follow-up mechanism I can: Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, text message, email, video. I'm going to keep going until I get your attention. And if I don't get your attention, I'm going to say this: Hey, Rich, it's my fault. I haven't got your attention. I take full responsibility for that. I'm obviously not creating enough value for you. Right. But I'm going to just pivot. I'm going to keep coming back at you in different ways till you finally go, man, this guy's, his follow-up is unbelievable. Relentless, right. Relentless follow-up. Yeah, because that's what a lot of people do is they feel rejected on touch one or two. No doesn't mean no forever. It just means no today. So you just pivot and you keep going until you until you find it's an opening. And when you find an open, you bust the damn door down. Right. You know, that's what I was telling somebody today. The door's open for you. What about finding other people down. to help you in? That's the connector, yeah. right? You, you know, I didn't know you before tonight, right? So, so I knew of you. I've seen your work. Uh, uh, but, but without these guys connecting me to you, right. what kind of opportunity could we have missed out on here? Sure. Yeah. So I'm open to anything, closed off to nothing. You know, narrow-minded people are closed off to everything. Yes. So I say, if you think we need to be together, there's some reason you think we need to be together, right? And so let's make it happen, because mm -hmm. we don't know what could happen from tonight. Right. Tell you know? when you see Cardone on Monday, let him know that McCarthy says... Let's make it happen. Yeah, you want him to come to Nashville and do an event, I want to be right? his voice guy. Yeah, I'm trying absolutely. to be his voice guy. Absolutely. So. He, he, got, he does good work with the voice thing. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. We're trying to come around with that, so... Uh, Keep following I, up, man. I, 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 he rewards effort. I had like Tim a, call him. He rewards effort. Just like, <laughs> listen, listen, big-time people reward effort. I'm going to tell you, big-time people reward relentless effort. They do not reward pansy effort out of people. Yeah. If you want to get their attention, be creative. The first time I met Cardone, I sent... Uh, after I sent, I sent little basketballs with 10X on them, and I sent a big box of these basketballs with 10X on them, and then I had a picture of, of he and I together that had a planet behind it, because it always says, you know, uh, planet Earth, whatever, and it said, had a picture of me, him, less 10X planet Earth together, and then it had all these basketballs, and if you'll see a sales team, they're always throwing these basketballs around, and it has Coach Bird on one side and 10X on the other side. And that was my way of following up with him. Good on you, man. Yeah, man. You got to awesome. be creative. We got seven yeah. drumsticks. You, well, you got yeah. to be, be creative because these are big time people. I mean, the guy's worth 100 million plus. He's got a lot of things going on. So you have to do something that gets his attention. Yeah. And he will not reward common things. Remember yeah. that. If you want to cheapen anything, I mean, even just, just Even just basic, and on a much more basic level, but even like when I was first starting doing drum clinics, like, 12 years ago, I would send a personalized handwritten thank you card to the client, mm -hmm. these people I still do business with. Thanks so much for having me at Mom and Pop Music. Really appreciate it. Had a great time. Mm -hmm. Sincerely, Rich. Yes. Uh, just something as simple as a thank you yes. in some form goes a long way. Well, I own the domain name Baby Stars to Big Stars because I believe every big star started off as a little star that wanted to be big, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I haven't done anything with it. But at some point, the concept is, how do I take you from a baby star to a big star? Right. And if we could show a, a demonstrated capacity or proven propensity to do that, that would be valuable for people, right? Sure. And so there's a process to do that. If we could speed it up, it would be valuable. If we could accelerate it, it would be valuable. Baby star to big star. And you think that the, the methodology, the systems and processes would work for, say, say there's, um, say there's an actor that's been on four national commercials, right? But he really wants to be a series regular or be doing movie roles. Mm -hmm. Would that work? Here's the prism I look at. And I write about this in Person of Interest. I think there's seven ingredients I'm looking for to go baby star, big star, right? Knowledge, skill, desire, confidence, likability, connectivity, deep networks. It's actually eight. So when I'm looking at a person and I'm coaching them, I'm going, man, this guy has got six of the eight things he needs to be big, but he's missing these two. Mm -hmm. His networks are small, so he's the best kept secret in Nashville, right? right. Or he, he, or people don't like him. His likability's low. Oh. And so I've seen people with- It's hard to get around likability. Yeah, well, think about if you had knowledge, 
skill, desire, confidence, but your likability is low, right? And, and there's somebody right over here that has the same things you have, but they're very likable or the connectivity is higher, whatever the case. So you can typically diagnose where a person has missing structures in one of those eight places. You know what's really interesting is that I've seen a lot of successful people that may have less of the skill set, desire, work ethic, and the likability is off the charts. Yes. yes. That might be one of the most important ones. Absolutely. And, and a job anyway. Yeah. And, and you know, how do you teach that? How do you teach likability? It's just energy. It's just openness, right? right. And, and so you teach a person that be open-minded, listen, be genuinely happy for other successes, get your head up, make eye contact, meet and greet people, right? Yes. Leave everybody Smile! Better. Yeah. Leave yeah. Better, everybody better than you found them. This is how you drive up your likability factor. And also, one thing that you're really good at, Rich, is people's names. Mm. I try. I mean, it, it's... I. I it's a difficult thing. It really is. But I always like, and I, there's always tricks. You know, you get like, uh, you meet someone. If I meet someone, I'd say, say there's a, uh, I meet someone at a bar that does something very, we can do some great stuff together. I'm running, going to the bathroom. I will just scribble down on my notepad. Mm -hmm. Met such and such on such and such mm -hmm. a date. Follow up, look them up on Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it, and they and it's they always people are always impressed that you remembered. Right after. So Four Irish coffees yeah. that to uh, to you know look them up and follow up the next day. So yeah, little things that we can do. You know, people seldom remember what you say, but they always remember. People seldom remember what you say, but they always remember the way you made them feel. I love that. That's well. Yeah. well if you study, you know, and, and right, wrong, or indifferent, what, how you feel about Bill Clinton to me doesn't matter. They say when he was at Georgetown, he kept a notebook. And every person he met, he asked them a couple simple questions: What's your name? Where are you from? And where are you going? Like, what, what's your vision? Mm. And he would take notes on every single person. Now, this is a college student, okay? He was way ahead of me when I was in college. Wow. I was the one taking down ladies' names. What's and your my, vision? And my, right. And, and, but, but, but he would ask them that question. And the second time he came back to them, he knew their name without his notebook, where they were from, and where they wanted to go. So he practiced. Yes. And people would ask him, like, why are you doing Made this? Made him a great politician. Why, why are you doing this? Yeah. And he would say, because one day I'm going to run for president. And if I help you get where you're going, you're going to want to help me. Oh my God! Yeah, he was he he was doing LinkedIn before there was a yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Holy God! No, that. you know, uh, but but I mean, isn't it? I mean, I just think about the the fortitude at, at eighteen or nineteen years old to think that way, to capture every name, to network at that level, to remember that. It's incredible. To help people get where they're going, and they say even today he's two and three hours behind because he talks to every single person. They cannot get him from place to place. But that's what like, made him, Mr. President. That's what made him right. That's how. That's what got him elected. Oh, and he was on the Arsenio Hall, uh, yeah. Hall show playing. That, play, that, that he, was the, a defining moment. His likability. That was a off huge the charts. The visual of that was huge. That one thing, and and during one of the debates, when a person asked him, "How does this? How does the recession personally affect you?" George Bush stayed behind the podium and answered the question and say, well, how do you mean, how does it affect me in the White House? Clinton walked out into the audience and stood right in front of the woman and said, let me tell you how it's affecting people in Hope, Arkansas, and how it's personally affected me. Those two moments got him elected president. And, and I, I like I like at your speaking events, you use a lapel mic I and do. you go out into the into the people, which is a great style. I might try to incorporate that. I, I've strayed away from the lapel mic. Mm -hmm. There's something very uh, visceral mm -hmm. and I love about, sure. I'll be here all week, folks, like a stand-up right. comedian. And I know that my speaking style is, I've watched, my, I, I'm that guy, I'm the pacer. Yeah, yeah. Back and forth, yeah. the energy is just like, you know, I'm that guy like a metronome. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's kind of like, have you ever seen the comedian uh, um, Maniscalco? What's his name? Sebastian Maniscalco. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I love that guy. But he's the pacer too. Yeah. But I love how you just get out there and you make sure you visit every table and you're connecting people with the whites of their eyes. And right. it's a great awesome yeah really, really I, I don't good. believe in customer service I believe in customer engagement and and I believe that people come they want to be engaged I think the podium creates a separation between us and them and if you can get out in there and and and, and just see them eyeball to eyeball I think it drives up the engagement I love that yeah I am too. I'm gonna experiment with that yeah. um, so coach bird coach bird .com. Yes. what's your where are you going tell us about anything you want to any closing statements your your top three books your, yeah, well, the new book products. out that, that has this kind of my greatest hits, you know, is Everybody Needs a Coach in Life. They can get that on Amazon. It's already an Amazon bestseller. It's an Amazon bestseller. My biggest coaching program for individuals that are out there, no matter what profession they're in, is called MonsterProducer.com. Uh, monster Producer, because I believe a monster producer is a legendary creature. 
that I love out. monsters. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a place you want to go. But go to coachbird.com and click on coaching. You can see that. But, man, I have really had a, this is Thank a you very so electric much. place, man. Pleasure. Love it her. Is, this you're, is you're, Crash Studio. You're, you're good, welcome man. anytime. You're very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much. And I hope we can keep in touch. Absolutely. And maybe work together. Who knows what's yeah. going to happen. But, guys, this has been Episode 7 of Pick Rich's Brain. You can send us all your questions. Use the hashtag. Hashtag pick Rich's brain, no apostrophe on the S. And I'm on all these socials as Rich Redmond, R E D M O N D. And where can people find you on the yeah. socials? Yeah, everywhere. Coach Michael Burt, just search Coach Michael Burt and I'm there. Oh, I, I, I was looking up Coach Burt on Instagram. So yeah. I got to follow you on yep. Instagram. Absolutely. So fantastic. Hey, real quick promo sexual moment here. Guys, be sure to check out www.drummingandthemodernworld.com. Facebook. Everything I know about the drumming world is there ready for you to download. And also we've created a Facebook community. It's a, just look up on Facebook. It's a group, Drumming in the Modern World. Type it in, join the group. We're talking about all things in the music business. It's gonna be a real community. You guys can all interact and share your thoughts on the music business. I'll answer questions. It's gonna be super fun. As always, you can find this podcast on iTunes, Google, Stitcher, all places where you can find podcasts and richredmond.com. And really quick, my fifth annual Drummers Weekend is coming up. It's November 3 through 5 in Nashville. It's at Soundcheck here in Nashville, and I'm gonna have the world's greatest drummers teaching you, interacting you. We're gonna, you're gonna be riding around in a limo. There's gonna be a meal package, a nice hotel. We're gonna be breaking bread. It's gonna be fantastic. Register at richredmond.com. This has been Pick Rich's Brain, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.